30 days of night. Those dark, dark days. Vampires will roam. Demons will rise. Zombies will eat. 30 days of night. Those dark, dark days. What's going on guys? Welcome to 31 Days of Horror. I am Morgan Film Fan. Let's jump into some scares. 30 Days of Night, Dark Days is the sequel to 2007's 30 Days of Night starring Josh Hartnett and uh, Melissa George. And uh, this one has been sitting on my shelf for a bit. I had bought this earlier this year and um, I thought about it and I'm like, well, do I watch it now or do I save it for 31 Days of Horror in October? And I'm like, Let's save it for 31 Days of Horror in October. So I've had this for quite a few months, but I was just sitting on it until now. Um, and I decided to wait on it. So I uh, watched this for the first time, and uh, I did not hear many good things about it. And I was just expecting some really cheap direct-to-video sequel. And um, it is all that, but I have to say I did have a pretty good time with this film. Now, uh, this basically, this is a sequel by all means. It does continue the events from the first film, and it does pretty much continue right where the, the last one finished, where uh, you have Josh Hartnett's character burning to death in front of the sun with uh, his, like, I don't know if it's a wife or girlfriend, but Stella, the, the main female character from the first film. Uh, she's back here, but she's recast, so we have, um, it's either Keeley or Kylie. I'm gonna go with Kylie. It's K-I-E-L-E, -E, Sanchez. So um, she's really good in this. The actress who plays Stella in this is awesome. She's badass. She's gorgeous. She does a really good job stepping into the shoes of Stella. And the she's the star of the film. Like, we follow her story. And uh, basically, the only thing about this film that's weird is that they still call it 30 Days of Night. I guess they have to. But there's no 30 Days of Night because this takes place all in Los Angeles. And uh, you have your regular day and night back and forth. Um, but the vampires basically came from, you know, they spread. So they're from Barrow, Alaska. And now they're, you know, all across North America. And what we have going on here is we have uh, Stella's character basically trying to um, expose the vampires to the regular citizens and warn people but obviously nobody's taking her seriously because everybody thinks she's a nut job and she tries to like basically do speeches in front of uh you know audiences and educate people on vampires but again everybody thinks she's an idiot and uh she even will expose the vampires themselves because the vampires are always following her in disguise like like you know, impersonating normal people. So during these uh, these events, these speeches that she does, she'll have infrared lights that will be act like sunlight to the vampires. So she'll kill the vampires in the audience in front of everybody. So everybody um, notices that, you know, these vampires are burning to death, but even still they don't believe her because they think it's a hoax and, you know, everybody's skeptical, blah, 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 yada, yada. Your typical, um, bullshit radar <laughs> when it comes to, you know, situations like that. But uh, she runs into this group uh, of basically vampire hunters, for lack of a better word, and these vampire hunters are basically victims of vampires themselves, and they also have people thinking that they're full of shit, so all these people, there's four of them total, I'm pretty sure, they've had family members die, some of them have had daughters die, some of them have had their wife die, whatever, be killed by vampires, and now they have dedicated their lives to go hunting for vampires. And uh, they find this woman, Stella, and then Stella joins them and they they go off and fight vampires. Now you have this lead vampire in this film named uh, Lilith, 
who is also very hot and uh, very uh, sinister in her ways. She she definitely plays the 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 gothic, sexy Anne Rice style uh, vampira, you could say. And uh, she's she's really really good. I love this one scene where she rips this guy's tooth out and then she sucks the blood out of the 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 gap in his tooth by kissing him and making out with him. So she's macking the guy while she's sucking his blood and <laughs> essentially killing him. <laughs> and it's it's hilarious because, you know, she's so sexy and, and she's making out with this guy, but at the same time she's killing him. So it's it's kind of like a, 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 a pro and con situation going on. I, I found that uh, amusing. You also have this character, now I do forget his name, but uh, there's this character who basically, he's trying to become a vampire and he's almost in like some kind of initiation like he he's trying to um warm up to the vampires and he has to do all these like missions and like prove himself that he's worthy of being a vampire before lilith can transform him kind of thing so he also plays the upcoming villain and eventually this film just basically leads to a plot where these vampires are planning to go back to Alaska for the 30 days to do another, like, um, massacre, essentially. Another uh, genocide of humans and, uh, you know, turn humans and feed and everything like that. Uh, one of the vampire hunters actually is a vampire themselves. I found that interesting. And his character basically is... is good like he, he he has to have blood every once in a while so he'll um try to find packets of blood to uh keep himself alive but he's on the good side he's on the vampire hunter side but he's infected at the same time so that kind of played for an interesting little plot and uh kind of like a an additional not twist but interesting plot device to put into the film it's a very turn-your-brain-off film. This film is loaded with CGI. You're not going to get ba basically any um, practical effects in here. Everything is CGI, and everything is not the best CGI because we're not dealing with the biggest budget in the world here. But it is a, you know, a load of B-movie fun, and it's always you know fast paced. There's no lulls in here. The gore's great, even if even. Even if, like, even being CGI, the gore is still fantastic. There's scenes where, like, bodies are hanging upside down. There's, uh, you know, necks being cut and, and everything. And heads being chopped off. And really, really, like, gore-filled scenes. Like, there's scenes where people are literally drenched in blood. And it just looks fantastic. And the characters are cool. And, um... The, the the story is is good enough for what we're dealing with here but the characters are all great like the characters are all unique they're all entertaining none of them are boring and they all are they all have their their personalities and and none of them are there's nobody really here just to be killed I mean the, of course there's some but even they are you care about them you 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 are invested in them in some level so I liked that. Um, yeah, the biggest complaint is just the CGI, and uh, a lot of people are going to hate the recasting, but I think the, the woman who plays Stella in here, uh, Kylie Sanchez, is fantastic in her role. Um, they do bring uh, the guy, Josh Hartnett's character, it starts with an E, I'm blanking on his name right now from the first film. They bring him back, obviously they cast him as somebody else, but he doesn't show up too much, so they kind of try and hide his face and try to, uh, like kind of use CGI to turn him and stuff and, and he only shows up for maybe five seconds total in in the whole film so it doesn't really matter that he's recasted because you're not he's not blatantly somebody else or you can't tell that he's blatantly somebody he can but it's he's not here for a whole lot he's just doing a cameo that they got a different actor to play him um but yeah it's uh it's a fairly cool film it's very b movie i got a lot of um this this goes a little bit more into like the underworld action side of things uh much more gorier than underworld i think but um you definitely get that that underworld a little little bit of blade vibes little tiny bit but um with lilith and everything the villain um i definitely got some underworld um aspects and and feelings and mood underworld mood to this that gothic that like leather not leather too much but that that very 
urban kind of atmosphere that Underworld has. So I found this to be a really cool sequel and it's a lot of fun and uh, I had absolutely no problems with this. It's a great follow-up to 30 Days of Night, which is obviously the superior film. Uh, we all knew that going in. <laughs> I, I, I knew that going in. I wasn't expecting this to surpass it. I would be very surprised if it did. But uh, it, is a, it is a fun sequel and it's, uh, it's a blast to be had. So yeah, that's uh, today's review. For 31 Days of Horror, um, perfect one for it. I'm glad I saved this film for 31 Days of Horror because it fits perfectly. And uh, it's a fun little flick. So that's uh, today's 31 Days of Horror review. Uh, stay tuned for more. Check out what's uh, on the channel already this year and check out my previous 31 Days of Horror from previous years because there's lots of those on the channel. And um, until next 31 Days of Horror review, keep things spooky. Stay tuned for more. Till next time, cheers.